So welcome. I'd just like to give you uh, a brief introduction to what we've been doing mostly in the parish on meadows and uh, making them and enjoying them. Just before I start, has anybody here made a meadow, garden meadow, anything like this, just to get an idea of numbers? Yep, yep, excellent. And people who have no experience in making meadows who would like to, is there anyone here? Right, excellent. Okay, good, good, good. So I can confuse you guys and bore the others. That's really good. Okay, so um, what I was going to do, it's a basically a number of projects we've been running, as I say, in Coldwell Parish uh, with, with a number of different groups on making meadows. The steps we're following, obviously, is you need to get your wildflower seed. You need to prepare where you're going to make your meadow, your receptor site. Sow the seed, look after your meadow, which is very important and enjoy your meadow, obviously, when you've made it. So I'm just going to go through these and just describe different projects and how we've done them. So getting your seed is the first point. Um, you can buy your seed. There's a number of reputable you know, people who sell it. There's also a number of seed mixes that are not very good at all. So do be careful, do talk to people, do get recommendations before you buy seed. Collecting seed, there's more and more meadows in the area and you should be able to get some. Uh, my uh, small holding Brookmead, which is off Old Church Road, we uh, give away seed to as many projects as we can every year. So you can always contact myself or there's other people who I'll introduce during the talk who may be able to help you get seed. But we ha do have a species rich meadow, we do collect seed from it. This is, in fact, the meadow at uh, my small holding, uh, my and Jane's small holding, Brookmead. This is our hay meadow. What we have, oh, what we've done is press the wrong button because this is a new thing. Uh, so, oh no, oh gosh. Right, one day I'll learn how to do this. Okay, uh, that one. It's a big button as well. Right, species rich meadow. It's uh, species rich means there's more than 15 different. Uh, species of wildflowers and grass in the meadow and you can see just a huge range here from buttercups to clo red clover, oxide daisies, this is a radiant version of uh, common knapweed, ladies bed straw with a butterfly on it, uh, common spotted orchid, spotted because the leaves are spotted here and this plant we'll introduce in a second. So we do harvest this every year, and we get groups of people coming, very welcome, obviously, with arrangements, to come and pick seed. So how do you get seed? Well, you can do it by hand. This here is a um, common knapweed plant, and the seed, you can see, is just sitting there in a little cup, you know? So you can just come along and pick it out. Um, uh, my poor wife, Jane, um, gets a little bit, uh, I'd take over the whole place, basically. And I suppose lots of plastic containers isn't a good idea in this environment, but uh, at least we're reusing them. And that's all different types of seeds we've been collect, you know, we collect and uh, use. You're always increasing, always improving your meadows, basically. Now, a better way, or more efficient, perhaps, way of collecting seed is to use a brush seed harvester. I don't know if anyone, many people are familiar with this device. This was actually the uh, only <coughs> device at the time. This was back in um, oh, 2019 um, when we started. Um, and this brush seed harvester belonged to Herefordshire Wildlife Trust, I should say. And what it does, it runs to the meadow and picks up the seed, basically. Just a big brush, throws it into the harvester here, and you then sort the seed. Um, using this really important equipment, which is a sun lounger. Um, <laughs> we, we're sophisticated, I'll tell you, we are very sophisticated. And you sort the seed. This is actually, we're, we're actually collecting seed from Coal Green. And Coal Green is dominated by Devil's Bit Scabious. Wonderful plant, Devil's Bit, because the devil nibbled the roots off it, because it was thought to be for healing, and he didn't like that idea. Um, anyway, so Devil's Bit Scabious Seed, abundant there. I was hoping to collect this here, but I was away, unfortunately. And this is actually a hammock from, yeah, some online thing. This is uh, the AONB collecting seed for one of the projects in the, in the parish. So, again, uh, collecting the seed, sieving it, and basically the seed we just put into sacks. So this is a mixture of seed and chaff, basically. And then my wife's stable for a horse is taken over. 
here she's looking about a little bit oh hang on a second it's supposed to be for the horse in here and we dry the seed out basically so collecting the seed in reasonable quantities we're in very very fortunate now in uh, Herefordshire because the AONB have a seed collector Herefordshire Meadows which uh, Rory Johnson will be talking about Herefordshire Meadows uh, shortly and the Herefordshire Wildlife Trust all have seed collectors so uh, you know we do have the opportunity now to collect seed for projects right this plant here how many people know what this plant is Excellent. Oh, that's good to hear. If you go to Cole Primary School now, they all put their hand up because we've been educating them on this. <laughs> this plant is yellow rattle. And it's important for creating meadows because what it does is it's a parasite on grass. So if you have very grass-dominated area, a lawn or a meadow, and it's just, just covered in grass, this plant will weaken the grass by parasitizing on it and allow other wildflowers entry into your meadow as well. And what it tends to do is grow like crazy, parasitize the grass, and then it, the boom and bust because there's not enough grass to keep it going, you know? So it is fantastic for creating an environment in which you can grow wildflowers. This is also yellow rattle. This is at the seeding stage. What you get is a pocket in which the seeds sit and then uh, can be harvested either by hand or really collected well with a brush seed harvester. This is basically, when we collect seed from um, our meadow, we, I'd like to know how much yellow rattle is in it because yellow rattle is such an important seed. And so this is how I spend my summer evenings because you know that's uh, exciting on Old Church Road, <laughs> counting the seed. I don't count all the seed in the bag, by the way. Um, but what I do is I take samples and this is yellow rattle seed. There you go. So if we count them, it gives us an idea then of how much seed is in it and we can follow guidelines and you know, adapt the seed to the meadow situation. If we think mm, plants are going to be, have a lot of trouble getting established, we can add more yellow rattle seed. If they're going to, you know, if it's a little bit of a site, but not so much grass, we can add, add less. And I haven't a clue what those calculations are there, right? I just <laughs> couldn't remember. I just Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. When you say you count it, you what, measure a square metre and, and do the No, I take samples, so I've, um, sorry, yeah, uh, I've got oh, a... It's scientific, I can't work out how you do it. Oh, well, yeah, it um, takes a long time. No, what I do is I've just got maybe, in this year we had 22 kilograms of the seed mix, oh. and I'll take maybe five or six samples, just one, one gram samples from it, oh. and count the seed in those samples. So then I know the percentage. That's the mix over the whole That thing. is correct. Okay. It, it's only an approximate thing, because yeah. I, I couldn't count them all, basically. Oh, but you know, it's a thing, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, sorry, I didn't, I didn't explain very well. I apologize. All right. Okay, preparing your ground for seeding is, uh, another crucial part of it. The first project we did, as uh, Liz was saying, Colwell Orchard Group, Colwell Village Garden. This is what it looked like before we started. Very grass dominated. And um, these things, we've been pulling out thistles. And the reason is creeping thistles can take over a bit. And you certainly don't want them around. So you need to get rid of any weeds. Make sure there's nothing interesting there. Because you don't want to go in and have an area you know, it's really got some, you know, interesting plants and then you just go and stick a standard mix on it. So pick your site, have a look at it and then get to work. So here we have Coal Orchard Group volunteers. Cut it, collect the grass because you can't leave the grass on there and then scarify as much as possible to produce a lot of bare earth is the way, is the, you know, sort of recommended way of doing it. So what we have here, either you have a lot of people doing it or you persuade a friend that, uh, who's here today, I think, Paul, uh, that he needs a walk in the countryside for a bit of fresh air and gets to push the scarifier up and down. So um, this is on our back meadow there. Uh, this is in the um, St. James's Church in Colwell, where we're trying to introduce more seed. And here, we, what we did was just use uh, strimmers to basically scarify the earth, and then we scrape away all the grass and what you end up with, or hope to, is something like this. Gosh, right, sorry, wrong button again. Okay, it's something like this, where you've got a, bare, a lot of bare soil, so the seed can just fall on the, on the soil. 
Doing it on a bigger scale, uh, you can use power harrows or something like this. This is an AOMB project in a local small holding in Upper Colwell, where they're just preparing the ground. So, you know, you can do it garden size, or sort of field size, or... Uh, we have since, because we got a little bit fed up of pushing little scarify through acres and acres, the AOMB have kindly um, given us a grant to buy this machine, which is a cutter collector, and this will cut the grass right down and then when you adjust it, it'll actually cut and create a uh, bare soil and it takes away all the grass clippings, which is important. Right, nice machine, really good, very nice the AMB. When you want to do it on your garden, you forget to tell your wife that you're about to do it and so she, when she comes back, basically lots of grass here and that really, really dense, thick grass. So what we, I decided to do here was just cut it and then cover it over to kill off the grass. And it doesn't look great, especially for the neighbors, sorry Kate. Um, but what it does, it gets rid of the grass and gives you again bare earth for seeding. Or in this project here, Hannah, who you'll know is, is part, part of the Coldwell Greener, basically just scarifying the earth with um, uh, the strimmer and then we scrape away all the grass and we can plant here on her verge. Right, so sowing wildflowers, that's fairly straightforward and quick. What you tend to get, unless you've picked the actual seed, you tend to get a mix, which is very light. It doesn't go through the um, sort of any sort of mechanical systems of spreading seed. So you just need people. You need to go back to the olden days where you throw the seed out. And you can see here, we've got quite a good, you know, bare earth. Coal Orchard Group volunteers there uh, scattering the seed. This is an AOMB project. Isn't that a lovely picture, that one? Not my picture, this is an AOMB picture. And this is a, a site, again, the Upper Colwell site, where they're creating quite a few acres of meadows. But on the other hand, here's Mer Meredith scattering the seed on their verge, on their front verge, which is just brilliant. That, you know, we just got, so we're going from acres to just small you know, areas. And then it's basically wait. Can I say that is really terrifying, waiting for it to come up? I promised people that if it didn't work the first time we did it, I'd put plastic flowers in just to, you know, to fool people. <laughs> right, so in the first year, if you're making a meadow, what this is, obviously you'd recognize my front garden here, um, is you tend to get a lot of yellow rattle, but a lot of plants don't come up straight away because things, they have to form rosettes. Some can take up to seven years to establish. The yellow rattle comes up to away, uh, straight away. What some people do, which I think is a good idea, is put um, poppies or cornflower annuals in, right? It gives you a bit of color in that first year. The yellow rattle is there, this sort of, you can see it there, but it just gives you a nice bit of color in it. Now, you will see people saying, oh, this meadow was made in, I don't know, Rotherham or somewhere. Isn't it beautiful? But what a lot of them are is these plants here. Now, these are cornfield annuals. They'll only last a year. They can't survive in a meadow. But they give you that bit of colour so in the first year if you want to, while you're waiting for the other plants to establish. So I've done that here. We've got, uh, you know, obviously, the poppies and that. Now, it's, within three years, this is it. We've got the, a really good establishment of oxide daisies, this happens to be. And you've got your colour and everything else. So that's year one. That's um, after three years. St. James's Church, they already had quite a lot of excellent, you know, a lot of oxide daisies, quite a good variety, but we, you know, they, they wanted um, to improve the wildflower meadows at the church, which I think is a great thing. And so we started a project here where we planted yellow rattle at high density because it's a very fertile site. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we won't go into that. Uh, I was surprised until I thought about it, yeah. Um, um, and... So we put a lot of yellow rattle down to try and clear the, the area. So this you can just see this is yellow rattle and seed. And this is you know, an ongoing project there just to, to increase the diversity uh, at the church. Uh, this is uh, another meadow we've established and a picture of cuckoo flower or lady smock, beautiful early flower. It takes a while for orchids to develop. Orchid seeds are unbelievably small. Well, to me, they're unbelievable. You know, mass, and they float about in the air and they'll settle. But you do need a symbiosis with the fungus in the soil. But once you've got your meadow going, generally, for common things like the common spotted orchid here, 
it will start to appear. In our first year, we had only a couple. Uh, now we're up to a few hundred in our meadow a few years later. And so you know, that tends to be... Some you might have to add if there are big di difference, but mostly you can sort of wait for them to come when the environment's right. Don't forget the grasses. This is, should be a common grass. It isn't, but that is um, crested dog's tail. And that should be a really, really common grass around here. Beautiful grass, but, uh, you know, so we do need the, the grasses as well. They're very interesting. As the county record for botany says, I'm fed up of people sending me pictures of orchids. I need, you know, the grasses are the things, you know. Anyway, uh, this is um, uh, knapweed, common knapweed, black knapweed, you know, again. So that should be common around here, but isn't. This is one of my favourite plants because how many people recognise this one? Oh, okay. This, I haven't, obviously I haven't been doing a good campaign for it. Yeah, it's um, Jack Goes to Bed at Noon, which is because the flower closes at noon, which is brilliant, isn't it? And it's like a dandelion on steroids, massive puffballs, beautiful plant, and you've got to get up early to see it, otherwise all the flowers are closed. And we, there's a lot of that coming on. This is a garden meadow. I don't know if Martin's here. He wanted to make a meadow, and it's literally that big diameter. You know, it's a metre in diameter. And look at that. It's, it's such... This is only the third, second year of it. And it, is, it literally is a circle of metre diameter. And isn't that beautiful? You know, it's species rich, attracting butterflies and all the rest of it. It is absolutely wonderful. If you want to, if you're low on seed, or it's rare, hard to get seed, you can grow plug plants. And here we have Carol Ashman, who did an amazing job during lockdown, growing hundreds and hundreds of plug plants. And cowslips, for some reason, we have a bit of trouble growing cowslips from seeds in meadows. So she grew hundreds of them. And the result is that. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely. And they should now establish and grow. But, you know, just a wonderful seed in the spring. I've uh, been fortunate to get a grant from the AONB to grow some rarer plants as plug plants because, again, the seed is rare. Things like um, Dyer's Greenweed, Burnet's Saxifrage, lovely names, aren't they? Um, and we're gonna, once we've grown these up, they will then be available for other people. So in about three years' time, come and hassle me and say, Lindsay, I really would like some Dyer's Greenweed or Burnet's Saxifrage or something. And, you know, we will hopefully you'll be able to collect the seed. Looking after your meadow, this is incredibly important. You need, a meadow is almost by definition, it needs to be uh, cut, uh, left at certain times and cut at certain times or grazed at certain times. The basic rule would be from March to at least July, leave it. Just leave it, then from, depending on what plants you want to grow, because some are very late, like say Devil's Bit Scabious is flowering in September, October. But, you know, oh, Carol, did you see a picture? No. Oh, quick. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry, Carol. Anyway, and so basically you can graze it, you know, or you can cut it uh, by scything, using a machine or whatever. But from, say, let's say August, let's just pick a month. You cut it, you keep it short until the end of February, and then you let your meadow grow and you let it uh, seed. This is crucial for yellow rattle because it's an annual. And if you cut it at the wrong time, you destroy it, you know? So this is basically how we unfortunately destroyed a lot of our meadows. And you've got to enjoy your meadow. You've put a bit of work in. It's not, you know, it's not a huge amount, but you put a bit of work in, so you've got to enjoy it. And enjoy it with the creatures. I mean, we all know that the insects are in, in trouble and the other, you know, little critters. It is amazing how quickly they come <coughs> back, you know, you, when you go from this green desert to something that's packed full of things. This, is, um, this plant here is Devil's Bit Scabious, and you can see the bumblebee on it and the butterflies. They just come in, and it is beautiful, even if it looks a bit untidy, you know, like here. It is, you just, it thrives with life, you know, it is just wonderful. Or you can just enjoy the meadow. <laughs> you know, we should be out there enjoying these things, shouldn't we? You know, and uh, celebrating. And getting out there with people, working on it, with friends. This is Colwell Orchard Group volunteers who have been working at Lugs Mill. We have school trips around. We do open our meadows, uh, Colwell Orchard Group, myself and our small holding, um, for the month. 
and we have people around and we're very lucky that we have school you know school children come around and look at it and we give them butterfly nets and they go and find things you know um, like you know spiders here which I'd need Tim K to identify for me um, but it is just wonderful you know to see the meadows utilized to see people learning in them and just to see the life in them including the kids of course after the kids have been you need to lie down for a while <laughs> so um, I am just in awe of teachers because you know a couple of hours with the kids and I've just got to lie you know anyway never mind right so uh, I'm sorry I don't know how I'm doing for time here but uh, this is what you can do basically you go from you know sort of a lot of grass not looking great to a lovely uh, meadow in this case Colwell Village Garden you can see this you know here just green pretty boring and three years later this is what we've got it's not quite species rich yet but there's a really good range of beautiful species in here what is fantastic and you see it here today isn't it is just how the community can come together and all of these people here we've been working with to create meadows you know from um, the parish council with Verges to the AONB have been fantastic in sorting it unfortunately verging on wild down here today they do wonderful work with the Verges identifying uh, what you know the remaining lovely Verges St James's Church uh, doing great job in increasing the diversity in their meadows but a really important group uh, that I haven't mentioned yet because Rory will be doing that is Herefordshire Meadows who've set up well I joined them in 2019 was it 2019 17 and I can't remember when they said they, they, they actually started but um, they've been doing wonderful work in creating meadows throughout Herefordshire so if I can just hand over to Rory for a second and here you go miss Great. Thank you. There you go. Oh, I've moved through as well. Do you want to? Oh, that's fine. <laughs> there you go. Fantastic. Oh, I'm just very quickly going to introduce myself. Um, so my name's Rory Johnson, and um, I work for Heritage Meadows, as Lindsay said. Um, and we've had the pleasure of working with Polk uh, on one of our projects in the past. Um, basically, we're a charity. We work across the whole of the county. Our aim is to try and uh, conserve and increase the stock of species-rich grassland of all forms, um, all the benefits that they bring. These are some of the things um, that we do. Um, so we work kind of at all scales, um, from kind of big estates down to tiny little gardens, um, trying to kind of both support people with uh, project funds that we manage to attract, um, uh, and also through education, so we try and make our website a real hub for information, for anything you want to know about how to manage a meadow, um, what you need to think about if you want to create a meadow um, on all scales. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is just a really quick kind of overview of sort of things we do. So we do, uh, as Lindsay said, we started back in 2016 as a farmer discussion group. We have evolved to be much more than that now, but we still hold a lot of training and workshop events. Uh, we do ID trainings, so bumblebees, plants. We're doing a fungus one soon as well. Again, keep an eye out on our website for information about that. Um, you can also, I've got a stand here, come and find me. You can also sign you up for our newsletters to get all that information. Uh, we do have a seed harvester, as Lindsay said, so we are doing, uh, wherever possible, we're trying to get local provenance seeds um, to do our meadow restorations, um, and there's just some examples, again, uh, very similar to what Lindsay's already talked about, um, and we're just trying to put lots of dots on the map, um, so these are the meadows that we have created in the last three years now um, through funding that we've managed to attract. Um, there, is also, there are also loads of people doing this off their own backs, which is fantastic. So we can go out and we can give advisory support and then people can go away and do this themselves. So this is just our project um, site. So we've got a few blue dots over here in Colwall, which is great. And we just want to add more dots to that map. That is our, that is our aim. Um, I think, that's it. I think that is it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, so it's just to introduce myself. I've got a stand here. Please do come and talk to me. I'm here until about two o'clock today um, and can give you more information. And I will hand back to Lindsay. So 
Sorry, I'm running, uh, running on a bit. Um, just like I said, there's a lot of people here. Do talk to Heritage Meadows. Do go talk to us at Coal Orchard Group, um, Making Meadows. The AOMB are doing wonderful work. St. James's Church as well. Do talk. There's a lot of help out there. And you know, you see a lot of mistakes because the information people were given was incorrect or whatever. Do, do, you know, talk to us. It is just great when we do work together to do things. So if any of you are interested in making meadows, improving your meadows, please, you know, do, do get involved. Thank you. Thank you.